What a headshot! What a headshot! How's it guys? This is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video, I'll be taking you guys through a draft that has 74 top 10k finishes and 55 top 5k finishes. So yes, you guys did hear me correctly there. As I've probably mentioned in the title of this video, no, this is not clickbait. This is a legit team that has that many top rated finishes. So what we're going to be doing throughout this video is I'm going to be taking you guys position by position through this team and analyzing each selection that this draft does have. Now I want to get this out of the way. The purpose of this video is not to sway you guys away from your current draft. What I would kind of do is look at the draft in this video and check how many similar players that you guys do have. Something that I would also focus on is going to be the formation as well as the price value structure between the positions that this draft manages to make use of. Then what you guys can do is maybe take that information back to your current draft and then add your own flavor or your own spice to it uh, to make it a little bit more personal. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this absolute banger of a video and sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. So as you guys probably could tell from the introduction to this video, this video was not possible without Fantasy Football Fix. And what they have done is they've added a new tool that I'll be going over in this video. So if you guys are new to the channel, or maybe you just need a little bit of a reminder, I do have a 65% discount if you guys do use my affiliate link before the start of the Premier League season. What an affiliate link is, is that if you guys do go on and subscribe to the premium tools, I do get a small amount of that subscription fee that you guys do pay. So it's almost a little bit of a way of supporting the channel and supporting me. But I just want to remind you that this is not kind of necessary. If you guys do want to use the free tools on the website, that's perfectly fine. And the week before the Premier League season is probably going to be the most time that you guys do spend on your AFPL team throughout the season. So it is a little bit of an added help if you guys do have some tools to aid you. And these can be the free tools or the premium tools. As I said, they have a lot of free tools at your guys' disposal if you don't want to subscribe to them. And I would just recommend checking out the website and seeing what's available to you depending on what kind of side you want to go on. But that's enough about the affiliate link. Link down in the description below if you guys do want to use it. But now let's get on to the actual team. So as I mentioned in the previous talking point throughout this video, we're going to be going over Fantasy Football Fix's new tool, which is called the Elite XI. And what they've done is they've got some of the best managers in the world, and they've basically set up a profile for them that's going to be showcasing their teams. I've only highlighted a select few managers here. I basically just took the top four managers that they had on their website, but they do have a ton more. And what I would recommend you guys doing is going and checking out these managers, maybe looking at their teams, looking at their bios, and I would try and select a manager that's similar to your play style. So I know it might be quite hard for you guys to know what your play style is if you're new at FPL. That's why I would just recommend maybe looking at a team that you really like, and that should be similar to the play style that you guys are gonna be using throughout the season. So what the Elite XI actually does is that it's going to be showcasing these managers, teams, and their transfers throughout the season. So you guys can kind of follow along and see what the best managers in the world are currently doing. Now, we'll be talking about a controversial topic about kind of copying teams in the next talking point. But I would just recommend following along and kind of using the decisions that they make to kind of aid you in your own decisions. So I wouldn't be kind of copying the decisions that they make entirely, but I would kind of use them as a little bit of a guide to help you make better FPL decisions if you're currently either new to the game or trying to get better at FPL as a whole. The nice thing about a lot of these managers is that they're actually definitely real people because they have a Twitter account. Uh, so I think Mr. Black was the only one that didn't have a Twitter account. So a little bit of a secret to kind of account there. Maybe he doesn't want to be showcased in the community. Uh, but I mean, look at those top 10k finishes and those top 5k finishes. If I had those ranks, I would probably also want to remain hidden. We also have some other options here like Fulman, Ginger Assassin, Dan Bennett. They all have Twitter accounts that you guys can go follow along with. Um, and as I said, I wouldn't necessarily look at the kind of rankings. Although there's some really good ranks here, I would probably focus on the similar play style a little bit more because I think that might be a little bit more enjoyable for you guys throughout the season. So go check out the website. There's a ton of managers that they're showcasing. And uh, basically what this tool is, it's kind of what happens on this channel. I post the team selection every week. I post the transfers I make. And you guys can choose to either go along with me or go with your own kind of decisions, which I always recommend. So in this video, I'm going to be focusing on one team and one team only because of the sheer amount of managers that they have on their website, as well as kind of the variation, which I was really happy to see. And yet again, it kind of proves the point that I've been telling you guys throughout the season. And this was especially highlighted in kind of reacting to the FPL experts drafts. It's just because these managers have a super high ranking in the past couple of seasons doesn't mean that their teams are exactly the same. And you'll go see when you go look at the Elite XI, uh, there's so many kind of variations and different team structures, formations 
that these managers do have. And that just shows you that you guys don't necessarily have to go template if you want to have a successful season in FPL. This has kind of been proved by these managers' track record. They have so many top 10k finishes, top 5k finishes. And I can assure you guys that in those seasons, they definitely didn't have the exact same teams. But getting back to this video, the team that I'm going to be going over is the Consensus XI. And as the kind of title says, this is basically the team that all the top rated managers on the website agree on. And this is almost their collective squad that they would pick. And that's why this team has 74 top 10k finishes and 55 top 5k finishes because that's basically all the managers minds combined into one super team that surely should do well for the upcoming season so this team is continuously being updated and that's why i wanted to just tell you guys that as of making the graphics for this video which was going to be saturday night uh, today is going to be sunday so you guys can kind of see when i release this video and then just track it back but this team is going to be continuously being updated through this final week before the deadline as so i would recommend checking it out as often as possible if you kind of want to see what the consensus xi's team is setting up to be but now let's go on and look at the actual draft so in this video we're going to be going position by position and kind of highlighting the selections that the consensus xi or the collection of top rated managers have gone for starting off in gold they've gone for sanchez and foster which is completely fine with me this is my own kind of selection in my current draft as uh, sanchez played yesterday in brighton's friendly so we don't have to worry about kind of any injuries. I know in the last couple of weeks, we've been worrying about him coming off in that friendly match at halftime, but he's back fit. So you don't have to worry about any kind of injury news with him. And at 4.5, a nice entry into that Brighton lineup that is nailed uh, without having to go with one of those center backs or those full backs that there might be some rotation throughout the season. So personally, I think that Sanchez will probably be my set and forget throughout the season. At 4.5, great value for money. And I think that Brighton should hopefully rack up a couple of clean sheets. Now moving on to Foster, and the only reason why Foster is in here is because he's 4.0 million. Bachman played in Watford's friendly yesterday and I'm pretty sure he'll be the number one going into this new Premier League season. The only thing I can kind of think of if Foster manages to start is either if Bachman's in bad form or maybe if Bachman gets injured then 100% Foster will be in between the sticks for Watford and at 4.0 million I can't see anything wrong with kind of going for him as your second goalkeeper. In terms of the other options that you guys can go for obviously I already spoke about Bachman another 4.5 option but I personally prefer the Brighton assets because they played in the Premier League last season and uh, to be honest they actually looked quite good I know that they've lost Ben White to Arsenal but I do still think they've got some backups or some reserves that should hopefully come into that lineup and uh, kind of fit into that systematic defense that it seems like Brighton make use of I personally think that 4.5 is the maximum that I would spend on a goalkeeper I just think at that 5.0 mark that 5.5 mark you can get better attacking options in the defense such as fullbacks from those respective teams without having to spend that budget on a goalkeeper that ceiling usually isn't that high now going on to the defenders and the defense is very similar to the first draft that I had and also my current draft to be honest Luca Dini is the only one that I might downgrade after kind of Everton's very bad performance yesterday against United losing 4-0 but in terms of the rest of the selection um, I can completely agree with it starting off with Ailing as your 4.5 option I would recommend having at least one 4.5 defender on your bench just because if push comes to shove they can always come off the bench and hopefully get you some points and Ailing had a really good season last season actually underperformed his stats and should have probably racked up a couple more assists and potentially some goals so ailing perfectly fine at 4.5 i know the leads fixtures at the start of the season aren't too great but i still think he has the potential throughout the season to get you a couple of fpl points kind of going on to the solid three or the three defenders that should start most game weeks it's luca dinia trent alexander arnold and then luke shaw from manchester united so my two essential defenders that i would recommend are trent and luke shaw i think last night luke shaw's ownership actually went above 50 percent which i think you guys can correct me if i'm wrong makes him the most highly owned option in fpl at the current moment so i think from a kind of point of view of ownership and also returns throughout the season luke shaw 100 i would go for and after the signings that united have made throughout the season i reckon that they should be contesting for the premier league title and you know what that means that means more defensive returns and hopefully some more attacking returns for luke shaw trent exactly the same situation there. there's a reason why he is 7.5 million the most expensive defender in the game it's just because he offers that defensive and that attacking threat. It's really nice to see that Van Dijk's actually been getting a couple of preseason minutes. Now, while I don't think that he'll start the Premier League season for Liverpool, I do think in the upcoming game weeks, he should nail down that spot. And uh, I don't think he's going to be going anywhere unless he does get injured. So I really do like Trent, even though I consider him to be a little bit overpriced on last season's performance. But I think they're just kind of uh, predicting that Liverpool will rack up a couple of more clean sheets than they did last season. 
Luca Dini is the only one that I'm kind of questioning right now. I thought that Benitez would be kind of a defensive manager, but unfortunately against Manchester United yesterday didn't look too great. And when you look at the opening couple fixtures, I think they face lead second game week, a Brighton third game week. I don't think that that's a guaranteed clean sheet. And that's kind of the only reason why I might be downgrading Luca Dini to maybe a cheaper option to afford some upgrades in the other departments. But from a kind of consensus point of view, completely understand it because I think if you're going to be going for kind of a mid-priced uh, defender, it's going to be Luke Shaw and Luca Dinia in that back line. The final defender in this lineup is one that's been spoken about quite a couple times. I haven't really mentioned him in previous drafts because I might have been a little bit scared of pronouncing his surname, but Oma Bamadeli, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, is a new signing for Norwich as far as I know, and he's been starting for them in the preseason. So although it is a Norwich defender, I can understand that most game weeks probably going to be conceding a couple goals I still do think in that 4.0 mark he's probably the most nailed option to go for so Oma Bamadeli 100% I would probably recommend going for I know we have had options like a Mankio but in yesterday's preseason game he only came off the bench really late in the game I think he played for the last kind of 10 minutes so I would probably recommend going with the Norwich 4.0 option than any of the others Amarty is another option that started yesterday in kind of the community shield against Man City. Uh, but I think if kind of Leicester signed more center backs, he will 100% be dropped to the bench. And I think it might be a little bit of a short lived 4.0 lifespan. So in terms of the midfield that the consensus XI makes use of, it's kind of a template midfield. I don't think necessarily because of the players that they own, uh, just because of the price structures. I think most players' teams kind of have the 12.5, the 12 million with Mo Salah, Bruno Fernandes, and then they have kind of two cheaper options with a 4.5 kind of accompanying them uh, so they can afford a three up front. So in terms of the options, I have kind of no complaints here. Uh, Mo Salah, Bruno Fernandes, I would definitely have these two assets in at the start of the season, especially because I think the next option like a Sancho from United won't start the season. So I would kind of recommend going with Bruno as you can always just downgrade him later on. Mo Salah, exactly the same. Probably going to have about 200 effective ownership in game week one with everyone capturing him against Norwich. So I would still recommend going with him. Although it hasn't looked the best in preseason, I still do think he always gets off to a fly at the start of every Premier League season. And that's why I think that it's a basically an essential pick that you guys should be going for. The next two options, Buendia at 6.5, I have him in my own current draft, hasn't gone anywhere since my initial draft. Great option to go for at Aston Villa. And now that Jack Grealish has departed, I think he's absolutely nailed to start in that starting eleven. The final starting midfield is going to be Rafinha from Leeds at 6.5. Great option throughout the season. Now, will I kind of bring him in at the start of the season? Maybe not, but I can understand if you guys want to go more conservative, not really pencil a transfer in because I think you will be bringing him in around game week three or four. The final option is going to be the budget option at 4.5 million. Brown Hill from Burnley uh, comes in here just as kind of a cheap bench option to go for at 4.5 there's not too many options that I would probably recommend I think there's probably three that you guys can look at uh, the first one's obviously Brown Hill from Burnley because he might offer a little bit more of an attacking threat than someone like a Basuma Basuma's the second option from Brighton and then the final option is probably going to be Douglas Luiz if he can manage to nail down a spot in that Aston Villa lineup so all three of those options I think should be fine but I think Brown Hill is probably the, the second favorite option with Basuma being the most nailed option so I would would probably recommend him the most because most game weeks they're not going to come off your bench anyway and if they do maybe Basuma has the best chance of getting a three-point appearance. Now the final department is where things kind of shake up a bit. Um, I think the consensus XI is maybe a little bit differential but in terms of kind of the overall ownership they do have some kind of highly owned options in here. The forward department this season in terms of ownership is completely almost differential. I can't really think of too many forwards that are owned by more than 40% of people so when you kind of look at the grand scheme of things that's quite a few managers that don't have that selected forward that you do own. The one player that I have no complaints about is going to be Antonio. Uh, played really well for West Ham yesterday. Scored the winning goal so I recommend that Antonio should be in most of your guys drafts if you want to consider a 7.5 option and in terms of the 7.5s my personal favorite option if not my most favorite striker in the whole price range so I think Antonio 100% should be in your team just because the fixtures are good the stats are looking good and when he is fit he scores quite a few goals so I think that's probably the only thing that you have to worry about Antonio with is the fact that he is quite injury prone but I would recommend just going with him at the start of the season because he is fit right now and if he does manage to pick up an injury then we can always just change him to another option the second player is the one that I've been on for quite a while but currently I might be going off him and that's going to be Colvard Lewin at 8.0 million I think it's just because there's been other striker options that have now made themselves uh, almost look like good picks such as a Danny Ings that also comes in at 8.0 million so Percy I would probably go with Danny Ings over Colvard Lewin just because they have those lovely fixtures at the start of the season but I think if you kind of want to go for a nailed option most game weeks is going to play and you don't have to take him out in the upcoming game weeks is going to be Colvard Lewin at 
0 million. Just had a great season last season, and I think that if he manages to pick up the form that he did, uh, he could have gone to score a couple goals under Benitez. The final forward is the more budget option. That's going to be Tony from Brentford. And I just wanted to say here that the Brentford manager, although Tony didn't start or feature on the bench even yesterday in Brentford's uh, kind of final preseason game, the fact is that the manager came out after the game and said that he should be fine for the Arsenal fixture on Friday evening. So you don't have to worry about Tony too much there. So you don't really have to worry about Tony too much there. I think that he will start against the Arsenal on Friday night. But maybe just keep your eyes out for the press conferences because I think the manager will kind of give us 100% surety that he is going to be starting against Arsenal. In terms of the forward picks, I don't have a problem with them. I think the only one that I might... Uh, be a little bit skeptical about is going to be DCL but I mean with those Everton fixtures at the start of the season he could have a couple of good games and a rack up a couple of goals in the opening couple of game weeks. Well this is basically going to wrap the video guys hopefully you did enjoy it please don't forget to like it if you did and subscribe if you're new and have not subscribed yet. As I said hopefully this video has been quite informative and I mentioned that I wouldn't be exactly copying this exact lineup but what I would be doing is kind of looking at the price structure looking at the players and then add your own flavor to it to make your team a little bit more personal to yourself. I'm me signing off. It's been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.